Oh, <laughs> <That's> so <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Alistair. I'm Douglas, and this is the Highland Hikers. So you're joining us today very early in the morning. Alistair somehow persuaded me that leaving home at five o'clock this morning was a good idea. So what is it we're doing today, Alistair? Why is it a good idea? We have uh, made our way up to Glencoe and we are going to do Bukal Et of Beg today. And we thought it would be a good idea because it's meant to get windier as the day goes on. So <laughs> fingers crossed it doesn't, it looks like it's getting worse, but uh, uh, we shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. It's fairly cold just now, the wind's starting to pick up a wee bit, uh -huh. but um, it's an absolutely beautiful morning. Yeah, it should be hopefully a decent day for it. Um, we are hopefully getting good views for the day, albeit as Alistair says, the wind is going to get worse and worse as the day goes on, so hence the, the early start. But it's quite a short walk. <laughs> It's only eight kilometers, 900 meters of ascent. So, I mean, potentially you could probably do this under four hours if you went around it pretty quickly, but we'll probably be a wee bit more sedate than that. But hopefully get to the tops before the wind picks up too much. And you can probably see behind us, we've got a really nice view over to the Aunach Egech Ridge, which Alistair, you've still got to do at some point, don't you? Well, I don't have to do the ridge. I can go up both Munro's. But why would it, you not do the ridge? I'll watch you do the ridge, yeah, maybe. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We'll, uh, we, shall, we shall see. That will uh, require some uh, overcoming of fear. Not right now, man. That was a... Uh, that wasn't my favourite part of this walk. After rum, I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, should we carry on with this walk then? Let's go. So Bukal Et of Beg isn't a solitary Munro, it is in fact two Munros linked up together by a nice ridge walk. So first of all we have Stob Du and secondly we have Stob Choir Reinich, uh, which is the second Munro on the ridge. There are also two ways to ascend this route. You may have noticed we are coming up from the west side of it. However, when I did this 10 years ago, I ascended from the east side of it. it does make the walk a couple of kilometers longer, um, but is an alternate way to do it. So both options are available. So we have made it up to the Bialach between the two summits marked by this large cairn behind us and it is now a wee bitty windy. Yes, coming up we thought it was rather calm given the forecast and we are preparing ourselves to get buffeted by the wind as we got to this Bialach and start to get a bit cold as we uh -huh. look over towards uh, the Bukal Et of Moor which is behind the camera just now. I did that earlier in the year and it was an absolutely spectacular walk that day. Um, we'll put a wee link to the description of that one down below, but uh, that one is commonly known as the Buckle, whereas this is known as the wee Buckle, isn't it? 
Yeah, that is correct. Um, given you know the the big one is much more imposing. The names themselves, I believe, mean the the shepherds of Glenetta. So you have the big shepherd and then the wee shepherd, which what is what we're on just now. Cool, interesting. <laughs> We have made it to the summit of the first Munro on the Buchel Etib Beg, which is Stob Choir Reinich at a height of 925 metres. Uh, it's less than the three kilometres to actually get to this point, so we've still got another five and a half left, which I've, I know it's, uh, it is an eight kilometre, but I find that a wee bit surprising. But just coming up here, there's not a great view back this way until you get to the summit and then. Oh, you can see over towards Dibuco, Ranach Moor, and oh, just far and wide, even with the clouds today, it's still looking really good. Yeah, it's quite uh, atmospheric conditions up here. Sometimes the clouds will be covering some of the peaks, sometimes they'll be free. We've got a nice view over to the second summit of the day as well, which is Stob Duva over in that direction. Looks quite uh, pointy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> pointy, yes. Conical. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting up that, although. It does look uh, like it might be a bit uh, iffy in the wind because it's getting windier and windier. It is, it is, <laughs> but uh, hi. We should maybe continue on then. Yeah, let's keep going. We have made it to the top of Stob Du, which has a height of 958 metres. So this is the taller of the two summits that we've got on this walk today. It's really lovely up here. The wind seems to have died down, actually. I feel yeah. like I'm not getting blown away anymore. I think we're just on uh, <laughs> what the west side, so the, the wind's coming up the, the east and is just probably going straight up over the top. So it's nice calm. I think we're going to get a quick bite to eat and then we're going to walk down just to the end of the ridge to see what the views are like towards Loch Etiv, yeah? Yeah, so the actual summit is the first um, sort of cairn you come across, but if you walk a wee bit further down, you should get some stunning views, as Alistair says, down Loch Etiv, so definitely worth that wee extra bit of a bit of a walk. Yeah. Unfortunately, is it Bidian Nambian is completely in the clouds yeah. over to the west, so we're not getting a great view of that. But the ridge uh, between us and the Hidden Valley, that looks like a fantastic walk, although I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't know if there's any routes actually, to go up that, I've yeah, not, yeah. It does look amazing though. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure I've actually seen somebody doing that one in a, in a video, but I'll need to have a wee look at that. But yeah, this is a beautiful day. This is actually fairly easy going as well. Uh -huh. Not being too taxing. Nope.
is us on the descent. We got back to the Bielach and it suddenly became extremely busy, didn't yeah. it? It was just like, no matter where you looked, there's like a group of people over there, a group of people here. There's 10 groups of people coming up the hill. So as we've been going down, it's just passing, passing, passing groups of people. Passing the hordes. I mean, they're in, <laughs> I mean we, we come out, well, the two of us, well, maybe the most be about four of us. There's like people, six, eight deep. Uh -huh. It's mental. It's, uh, I haven't seen a mountain this busy since we did Ben Brackey. Yeah. And uh, given this, well, I suppose they're probably comparable in a mountain. No, maybe not in a cent, but this isn't a big day out, really. No, it's quite an easy one. So I suppose we've seen quite a lot of family groups and stuff like that. I mean, it's obviously great that there's lots of people coming out onto the hills. We're totally. not saying people shouldn't be here. Uh -huh. It's just that the last few walks, particularly the ones I've been on going and doing the Corbett's, I've not seen any other people whatsoever. So it's been quite the change. Aye, and, and in last week's one as well, when I got drunk it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I never saw another person that day, but that's obviously because it was chucking it down. Aye. But, uh, today has been very enjoyable. And I think we, we had days trying to decide what we were going to go, come out and do today and we have made the right decision because we've had cloud free summits whereas all the neighbouring ones have been in the clouds uh -huh. so very good choice I think in the end yeah really enjoyed this walk nice easy one we'll be home in plenty of time for, for dinner as well given the early start so it's been a nice day really enjoyed it hope you enjoyed the video if you did Consider giving us a wee thumbs up and a subscribe and we will see you in the next hike.